Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Boltony Chronograph Reference S205033. This watch is available from Boltony.com for $153. US It's also available from Boltony Watch's official store on AliExpress for €201. Euro. Now, I expect the €201 Euro price to be reduced during the AliExpress 1111 sale, which starts on the 1st of November. So firstly, let's look at the travel case that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch comes in this hard shell travel case. I'll show you the interior. As you can see, both halves of the hard shell travel case are lined with two foam panels, which does a good job of protecting the watch in shipping from any damage. I like these travel cases, they're very practical and durable and they make a refreshing change from using the default option of a plastic or cardboard watch box. With regards to the items, this is the warranty card. Now usually at this price point, $153 US, one would expect a 12 month international guarantee. So to get a two year guarantee is very reassuring and credit where credit's due. Boltony actually fill in the date of purchase and stamp the warranty card. Often with Chinese low tier brands, they leave the warranty card blank. There's no date of purchase and therefore the warranty is invalid. So it's good to see Boltony actually filling in and stamping their warranty cards. This is the owner's instruction manual, clear concise diagrams, the instructions are in English and it details the operation of the movement use which is the Seiko VK61 Mecha Quartz. One also gets this spring bar tool and nice attention to detail because it's Boltony branded, two rubber caps, one removes. And at one end we have a fine two prong fork and at the other end we have a fine push pin tool, so useful for removing straps and resizing bracelets. And lastly, one also gets this Boltony branded microfiber polishing cloth. I always think it's a nice touch to get a branded microfiber polishing cloth, irrespective of the price point of a piece. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Boltony Chronograph Reference S205033. We have a 39mm case diameter. We have a 46.3mm lug-to-lug measurement, a thickness of 12.2mm, and a lug width of 20mm. The nylon NATO strap is straight and parallel, it doesn't taper, 20mm at the lugs and 20mm at the buckle and tang. Nice heavy gauge of metal to the solid 316L grade stainless steel buckle, no sharp edges, no burrs and matte bead blasted effect to the top side, underside and flanks. The two keepers are solid stainless steel, again nice heavy gauge and also matte bead blasted effect. I like the two keepers are stitched either side and the stitching is good quality, no loose stitches and that prevents the keeper sliding out of position. Plenty of holes in the nylon which feels like ballistic nylon which is very stiff but I think with daily wear it's going to break in and become very soft and supple. So this will fit up to a 7.5 inch wrist and the holes are welded to prevent them fraying with regular use and also the end of the strap is welded to prevent it fraying. So I'll just do the NATO back up. And then I will continue. So with regards to the rest of the specification, we have a double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating and the clear anti-reflective coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly, highly reflective nature of the silver, silver mirror polished syringe hands. The proportions of the syringe hands are very good and also the symmetry of the dial is excellent. I like the sighting of the sub dials at 12 and 6 o'clock. And also it's a very well balanced dial because they've put chronograph at 9 o'clock and Boltony at 3. So chronograph and Boltony balance each other. The proportions of the printed Arabic numerals are clearly legible, good size, and the minute ticks on the chapter ring are also clearly printed and indexed very well. So this uses the combination of BGW9 for the Arabic numerals and the indices which are printed are in C3, so nice combination. And the C3 patina loom complements the C3 on the printed indices. The color tone match is good. Contrasting red arrowhead tip to the chronograph hand. So symmetry is good, legibility is good. Nice profile to the double dome sapphire crystal. I like the bevel on the edge of the sapphire crystal which projects above the top edge of the bead blasted stainless steel bezel. So very nicely finished sapphire crystal, nice slight dome to it and the clear AR coating is outstanding. With regards to the crown, it's coin edge finished, solid 316L grade stainless steel. The dome's cap is matte bead blasted sterile and let's test the screw down crown execution. The screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters, which is strong specification for a chronograph field watch. 
absolutely silky smooth, no friction in the crown whatsoever, perfect interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. So this is powered by the Seiko VK61 Mecha Quartz. Now this does have a date complication and the date wheel is present beneath the dial, although we don't have a date window. So in the first click position, one can feel the quick set complication of the date wheel clicking over when one rotates the crown clockwise. So there is a phantom date setting position with the VK61. Pulling it out to the second click position hacks the movements. We're now in the time setting position. And if you look closely at the six o'clock subdial, you can see the subdial second hand has now stopped dead. So it is possible to set the time precisely to the second. No back play, clockwise and anti-clockwise. There's an immediate response when one rotates the crown clockwise and anti-clockwise the syringe minute hand immediately rotates. So I really like that there's no back play in it and it feels very light resistance, no friction in the gearing. The VK61 is very smooth. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. You can see the subdial at six o'clock. The subdial hand begins to tick around the subdial once again. So let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup. This is 10 out of 10. Screw down crown execution. Boltony consistently get this done very well on all their watches. Silky smooth. And I like the screw down crown. It feels very smooth. The internal thread perfectly interfaces and picks up immediately with the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. 100 meters is very good. They could have used the cost cutting measure of a push pull crown, but to see a screw down crown on a field chronograph is very good. So let's test the two pushers and the chronograph complication. So we have two screw down pushers, absolutely silky smooth collars on the coin edge finished pushers. So I'll just test unscrewing the lower pusher. Again, absolutely silky smooth. The coin edge pusher is very well finished. Map B blasted effect to the pusher itself. So pressing the top pusher activates the chronograph complication and you can see the contrasting red arrowhead tip on the main chronograph hand begins to tick around the dial. Pressing the top pusher will stop the chronograph complication again and pressing the lower pusher will make the chronograph hand fly back to the 12 o'clock index on the dial. Now minor criticism is there is a QC issue and this is very disappointing from Baltany because they usually have very strong quality control. If you look at the red arrowhead tip, you can see it has reset slightly to the left. It's misaligned. It hasn't reset bang on 12 o'clock. Now with the Seiko VK61 Mecha Quartz, I would expect it to reset bang on 12 o'clock every single time. So I like to be thorough when I level criticism at a brand. So I'm going to test it two more times to be consistent. So let's stop it again, pressing the lower pusher. And again, it's reset slightly to the left. I'm just going to check it a third time. Right, so let's check it again. So three out of three times, unfortunately, the red arrowhead tip to the chronograph hand has, has reset slightly to the left. Now, unfortunately, unlike a pure chronograph, a pure quartz chronograph movements, the VK61 doesn't have an option to reset by pressing the two pushers. On some quartz chronographs, you can actually reset the alignment on the subdials and also the main chronograph hand. If they're slightly misaligned, you can press the two pushers and it will actually reset them bang on 12 o'clock. But with a VK61, one has to remove the chronograph hand from the cannon pinion and reset it back in to align it perfectly. And this is a fundamental that Baltany should get correct. When they're QC checking the watches, they really need to check that the second hand has been pressed on aligned correct and it resets aligned because it's very disappointing. This is a 153 US dollar price point piece to see that the chronograph hand always resets slightly to the left rather than bang on the center. So very disappointing. But let's test the screw down crown, uh, sorry, screw down pushers execution. Absolutely silky smooth on the top pusher. The collar screws down very well, immediate thread pickup. And the screw down pushers provide an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters, which is very good specification. Right, so I'll show you the case back. Now it's sterile and unsigned. Concentric CNC lays tool machining to it. It's very low profile and flat, and it has milled slots. So as you can see, perfectly sterile, very flat and low profile, and that's the benefit of using a Seiko VK61 Mecha Quartz. It's a very low profile Mecha Quartz movement. So the case back is very flat, fits very close to the wrist, even using a NATO strap, which passes beneath the spring bar tools. 
Nice CNC lathe tool machining to it, concentric circles as you can see it refracts the light. The milled slots are very well executed, no sharp edges, no burrs. So it's a very smooth, sterile case back, which also provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters, which is good specification for a chronograph field watch. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. So we've got a combination here on the printed uh, indices, sorry, the printed Arabic numerals, we've got BGW9 Superluminova. On the printed indices, we've got C3 in green, and that matches the patina loom on the syringe hands, which is also C3. So incredibly bright, and it will continue to glow for a good length of time because we're clearly looking at five to six layers of C3 and BGW9 Superluminova. I'm pleased to see Baltany haven't used the cost-cutting measure of only printing two to three layers, as some low-tier Chinese brands do. So the BGW9 on the Arabic numerals contrasts very well with the uh, indices, which are in C3. So nice to get the combination. Now, usually I prefer loom on dial and hands to match. I prefer the dial only to have one color of loom. But in this case, I think they've made the correct decision because the printed Arabic numerals are clearly legible. Good proportions to them and the font is clearly legible. And I like the symmetry of the dial with the absence of a date complication. They've made the correct decision by citing the subdials at 12 and 6 because that retains the symmetry rather than cutting off portions of the Arabic numerals in order to fit them in. So as you can see, it's still glowing very strongly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. The BGW9 is top grade and the C3 is also top grade. So very good. Right, so lastly I'll discuss the movement used. So this is powered by the Seiko VK61 Mecha Quartz, which is made in Japan. The VK61 has a three-year stated battery life. Now the three-year battery life is based upon you using the chronograph complication for 60 minutes per day. However, in reality, you're highly unlikely to be using the chronograph complication for anything like 60 minutes per day. So therefore, it's nothing unusual for the battery life to last for four to five years if you don't use the chronograph complication daily for 60 minutes. So three year battery life is very good. That's the minimum. But in reality, it's four to five. The stated accuracy of the VK61 is plus or minus 20 seconds per month. So I want you to consider that for a second. That's not plus or minus 20 seconds per day or per week. That is per month. Better than plus or minus one second per day accuracy. It has hacking, as I've demonstrated. One can hack the second hand on the subdial to set the time precisely to the second. And it does have a phantom date setting position. Putting it out to the first click, one can feel the date wheel clicking over beneath the dial. So the only negative to it really is the phantom date setting position. And in the first position, when one rotates the crown, one can feel the clicking of the quick set complication. So I like the hacking, I like the reliability and the accuracy. And really the only negative, which I'm not going to level at the movements because usually Seiko VK61's reset bang on 12 o'clock is the QC issue of Baltany not pressing in the second hand into the cannon pinion aligned correctly. It's slightly misaligned to the left, but this is a criticism I'm going to level at Baltany rather than the Seiko VK61. They usually reset bang on 12 o'clock. So really I would like to see Baltany improve on the QC of setting the second hands, but the movement itself is reliable, well-proven workhorse mecha quartz, and I really like its plus or minus 20 seconds per month, and I really like the three-year battery life, which is four to five in reality. So lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the Watch Me 2 criteria should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So this is 153 US dollars on Baltany.com and I'm going to evaluate it at that price point rather than the Baltany Watch's official store price which is currently 201 euro because often resellers and stores on AliExpress they mark up the prices prior to the 11.11 sale and then discount them during the sale event. So the 201 euro isn't a realistic price, the 153 US dollars is really the true price. So I'm going to say it's good quality and good value. Now, unfortunately, I can't say it's excellent quality and excellent value due to the QC issue, which is fundamental. The misaligned chronograph hand, that really has to be perfect. It has to reset bang on 12 o'clock. If that were the case, yes, I would say it was excellent quality and excellent value. 
but I'm going to downgrade it to good quality and good value because of the misalignments. It's fundamental to get that correct and Baltany really should have done the QC check and realigned the second hand. So it's a good watch, um, but the misalignment really spoils it. The quality of the C3 and the BGW9 is excellent. The Seiko VK61 is an excellent mecha quartz movement. The matte be blasted effect to the case, the bezel and the case back throughout is all finished to a very high standard. And I think it's an excellent looking piece. I think the double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating is done very well. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Baltany Chronograph S205033. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.